For many Jews worldwide, the idea of relocating and starting a new life in Israel can be a dream. However, any Jew who's actually immigrated here will tell you that that isn't always the case. Joining me today in the studio is author Jessica Fishman, who has just written a book documenting her own struggles immigrating to this country. This name, Chutzman High Heels, I absolutely love it. I'm really excited to hear about it, but oh, let's first you. kind of start about, uh, you know, talking about the struggles that you faced as an immigrant um, moving here that you weren't necessarily prepared for. I think there is a lot of struggles that most immigrants aren't prepared for. I don't think it's special to me. I think there's a lot of differences between expectations and reality. You know, I thought when I was going, when I was mo moving to Israel, I thought that I was going to be you know, working the land of milk and honey and be swept off my feet by some strong yet sensitive olive-skinned Israeli. <laughs> in reality... <laughs> they're very specific. In reality, I was, you know, fighting bureaucracy worse than FEMA's and dating, well, some questionable characters. Right. But the thing is, is, you know, a lot of people deal with those average, average difficulties of learning mm -hmm. Hebrew, of the bureaucracy, of going to the army that, that is normal to most new immigrants. For me, one of the more difficult things that I ran into was actually when it came to my Jewish identity, and that was something I never expected, that my Jewish identity would actually be questioned in the Jewish homeland. Interesting. So talk to us about why your Jewish identity was questioned here and, and kind of what that was like for you. So one of the best ways that I can explain it is that you know, there's that joke, if you put two Jews in a room, you get three opinions. Right. And it's sort of the same thing. I would say it's, it's not necessarily a joke. <laughs> it's, it's true, right? All jokes are based on right, reality. Right. And it's sort of the same thing when you move to Israel. You have, um, or for two definition, for the definition of a Jew in Israel, you have the definition of moving to Israel, which is if you have one Jewish grandparent, mm -hmm. and that's based on the Nuremberg laws, so that right. anybody can anybody that was that could have potentially been hurt by the Nazis mm -hmm. had a safe haven in Israel. And then there's the second definition for the Rabbinut, which is if it's according to really really strict hal halachic definition. Right by the most strict ultra-Orthodox rabbis. Your mother has to be Jewish. Exactly, yes. your mother has to be Jewish, and all the, there's all these different laws, but basically it leaves close to, I wanna say 600,000 people that meet the first definition, but don't meet necessarily the second definition, and right. don't have sort of some of the basic human rights. And mm -hmm. I fall under that category because my mom converted to Judaism with a reform rabbi. So while I have the right to move here, I don't have the right to get married here if I would have been killed during my IDF service, I wouldn't have been able to technically been buried in the IDF cemetery. There's a lot of things along the way that it ends up impacting impacting your life. So what inspired you to write this book? So I originally shared my story about six or seven years ago and I got a lot of great feedback and support and they really encouraged me to share my story. And I really wanted to take something really negative, something really negative that happened to me and turn it into something positive mm -hmm. and try to make social change to show people how laws actually impact individual lives. And I hope that's what I've done with my book. Well, just from the title, and I can tell you that I want to read this, so I might steal your copy. But thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me.